Ahead at 4 o'clock, the highly anticipated report is out, but with redactions, how the president and others are reacting to the Mueller report. Also at 4, storms push across the south, leaving behind a lot of damage. How this will affect central Florida. And Mears and Uber are teaming up why the two companies decided to work together. Those stories and more ahead on News 6 at 4 o'clock. It's only 60 seconds away. Stay with us. Live. Getting results. This is News 6 at 4. It should never happen to another president again. The president, Congress, and the public all talking about the Mueller report. Now at 4, their reactions to the redacted documents. The redacted version of special counsel Robert Mueller's report on Russian interference was released this morning. This is News 6 at 4. I'm Lisa Bell. And I'm Julie Broughton. Ginger Gaston is off tonight. The more than 400-page report has several pages that are completely blacked out. That's something Democrats are not happy about. Nicole Killian has more of what's in it from the White House. This hoax that should never happen to another president again. President Trump hailed the Mueller report as it went public. No collusion, no obstruction. I'm happy with that. There never was, by the way, and there never will be. The 400-page report was delivered to Congress on a CD-ROM, nearly two hours after Attorney General William Barr laid out the findings. The special counsel confirmed that the Russian government sponsored efforts to illegally interfere with the 2016 presidential election, but did not find that the Trump campaign or other Americans colluded in those efforts. But on the issue of obstruction, the report noted, if we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. However, we are unable to reach that judgment. The report points to 10 episodes of possible obstruction, including the president's firing of FBI Director James Comey, and it suggests the president tried to seize control of the Russia probe. When the president found out a special counsel had been appointed, he told then Attorney General Jeff Sessions, oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. The report adds at one point, the president directed then White House counsel Don McGahn to call the acting attorney general and say Mueller must be removed because of conflicts of interest. Democrats want the full unredacted report and to hear from Mueller directly. I think it was probably written with the intent of uh, providing Congress a roadmap. Attorney General Barr says he will allow congressional leaders to see a less redacted version of the report. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. Attorney General Barr is scheduled to testify publicly before the Senate Judiciary Committee next month. If you'd like to read the full redacted report, we've posted it on clickorlando.com. Look on our homepage. Well, blue skies in Orlando and Daytona Beach Right now, big changes, though, are coming to Central Florida. Get ready for some strong storms. Let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell. So, Tom, when can we start to see these changes? By midday tomorrow, Lisa. By this time tomorrow afternoon, I think we'll be right in the thick of it from Orlando down to Bavard County. It starts early tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about the timing later. I want to show you what's happening now. We're waiting for the sea breeze to move in and Clyde with the West Coast sea breeze to produce some big scattered showers for us. The big story, though, is this mess right here. This is what's on tap for us tomorrow. Right now, pouring rain is approaching Jackson, Mississippi, all the way down to New Orleans tonight. And look, see all those red boxes? Those are tornado warnings firing up through large parts of Mississippi right now. From Jackson all the way down to Columbia, it's a mess over there. While here at home, we're waiting for our colliding sea breezes to maybe bring us a few little light scattered showers tonight. Standing by right now in the Storm Tracking Center is meteorologist Candace Campos with an update on the damage that big squall line has already produced. Oh yeah, Tom, it was a crazy start to the morning for many folks along the Gulf Coast. Wild way to wake up for this couple living in a mobile home in Buffalo, Texas. They were woken up with high winds that flipped their home off its foundation. Family members say the man was thrown from the home as it was knocked over. The victim and his pregnant wife were taken to the hospital but have since been released and crews are working to restore power after early morning storms in Shreveport Louisiana took down trees and those power lines although the storm was bad a homeowner is certainly counting his blessings today I hate to see it especially a lot of these other houses like ours didn't get it anywhere near as bad as a lot of the houses on the street but 
I'm thankful and blessed because there is a big tree right next to where my wife and son were sleeping. And it was a stormy start for another for other folks in Leon County, Texas. Look at this wind, rain and hail just battered the area with wind gusts reaching up to about 90 miles per hour. And as Tom was mentioning, that severe weather threat will continue to track east today and tomorrow. Locally, we could see that risk for strong to severe storms that could produce heavy rain, hail and even rotating storm. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells will have a break out of the timing and what the severe weather threat means for you coming up in just a couple minutes. Julie. Candace, thank you. A rocket booster on its side today. The battered booster arrived in Port Canaveral. The booster toppled over after landing on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean because of rough seas. It's one of three boosters that has lifted SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket off launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Last week, we're told a new 19 million pound crane will be used to lift the booster from the, of course, I still love you drone ship. A Central Florida city leader is in hot water tonight. He's accused of making inappropriate comments about Hispanics. It happened during the Mount Dora Heroes Foundation golf tournament last Friday. News 6's Vanessa Ariza joins us now live in Lake County. So, Vanessa, we're talking about the public safety director. What happened to him? Well, Lisa, right now he's on paid administrative leave and he also serves as Mount Dora's police chief. Within the past hour, hour and a half, we have learned that the city is now issuing an apology. An investigation into comments made by Mount Dora's police chief continues tonight. He's on paid leave as the department looks into comments he made at a golf tournament last week. Chief John O'Grady reportedly made a racially insensitive comment when presenting an award meant for a couple who owns the Las Palmas Cuban restaurant in downtown Mount Dora. In a statement released by the city of Mount Dora, a spokesperson said, quote, the remarks are in no way reflective of the city's values, principles, and ideals and can only be characterized as insensitive and inappropriate. An attorney for the couple who owned the restaurant shared information about the incident on her Facebook page, saying when the owners weren't present to accept an award, a statement was made to a Hispanic officer. The chief deciding the Hispanic officer would accept the award since they were the same. As more attention was drawn to the comments since it took place, the city has since said it will issue an apology to all members and sponsors who were at the Mount Dora Heroes Foundation golf tournament. And the attorney for that couple, Laura Hargrove, also posted on her social media account that she simply wanted an apology from the police chief. And it seems as though she is getting that now within the past hour, hour and a half that we learned from a city spokesperson. Now, we also asked that city spokesperson if we could speak with the chief or if we could get a comment from the chief. She said at this time and point, they are not allowing interviews. Live in Mount Dora tonight, Vanessa Ariza getting results. News 6. Vanessa, thank you. Now to a crime alert. Police need help tracking down a cell phone store robber. Take a look. Daytona Beach Police posted this video showing the two men robbing the AT&T store on Bevel Road. It happened two days ago. Police say they arrested the man carrying the gun and wearing the green hat. He is 51-year-old Clennon Williams. They now need help identifying the second suspect. Police say these two also robbed a Metro PCS on Sunday. If you know who the guy is in the hood with his face covered, called Daytona Beach Police. A man shot and killed in his driveway. Now up for the accused killer faces a judge. Today, an Orange County judge denied bond for 30-year-old Willie Griffin Jr. Investigators say he shot Antoine Davis last weekend. Griffin is charged with first-degree murder. Davis's body was found at a home along Randall Street. Davis was taken to the hospital and later died. A motive has not been released. A big brush fire burning in Brevard County is now 90 percent contained. The Florida Forest Service says firefighters will most likely get it to 100 percent by the end of the day. We brought you this as breaking news yesterday at four. The flames burned 300 acres and came dangerously close to homes in the Flora Vista community. Troopers believe it was a car fire in the woods that may have started it. In just a couple of hours, thousands of people will lace up their running shoes in downtown Orlando. The annual corporate 5K is back. It also means drivers will have to find a different way around the area. Here's a look at the route for tonight's run. It starts at Lake Eola and works its way to Bumby Avenue before wrapping back around. The 5K starts at 645 and benefits the Track Shack Youth Foundation.
Downtown Orlando will also be busy tomorrow evening. The Magic hosts the Toronto Raptors for Game 3. And the Amway Center is already preparing for the big event, putting out the blue and white t-shirts and wristbands on chairs. The series is tied, so tomorrow's win will push one of the teams ahead. The game starts at 7 tomorrow night. Well, moving rocks one at a time. How divers are helping clean up a local spring. And Samsung's highly anticipated foldable phone is about to hit the market, but there are reports of some major glitches. A closer look coming up. Also, two former foes, now friends. Why Uber and Mirrors are teaming up. That's next at 4. You're watching News 6 at 4, getting results. We will be right back. And during the break, we are streaming live on Facebook. Search Lisa Bell News on Facebook right now. Warehouse. Live with Ginger Gadsden, Lisa Bell, Julie Broughton. Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells and Meteorologist Candace Campos. This is News 6 at 4, getting results. Once enemies, now friends, Uber and Mirrors are teaming up. Starting tomorrow, a new icon will pop up on the screens of Uber users in Orlando. It's called Uber Taxi. News 6's Amanda Castro joins us now. And Amanda, you reached out to both companies. Why did they decide now was the time to work together? Well, Julie, they say it's better to work together. There's a high demand for transportation across Orange County from both residents and visitors to Central Florida. So this new partnership meets that demand. And in the end, the real winner is the customer. More options are coming with just a tap of your phone. Starting tomorrow, Uber riders across Orange County can now request taxi rides from Mirrors Transportation through the app. It's called Uber Taxi, and it's changing the ride-sharing game for both drivers and customers. Drivers to build more revenue, another stream, and then for guests, it's um, another opportunity. An opportunity that at first didn't seem like it would ever happen. For years, the Orlando-based taxi company tried to prevent Uber from expanding into the Central Florida area. But last November, it announced a new partnership with Uber. Rebecca Horton with Mirrors says it's better to team up. There's no reason that we shouldn't work together, um, and it's better for the guests because there's more opportunity for them to get transportation whenever they need it. This is what Uber riders will see when they open up the app, a taxi option with the pricing up front. They can also pay for the ride and tip through the app. Horton says more than 600 Mears drivers can participate in this new service, adding they will have to go through Uber's background checks. She's calling it a win-win for everyone. It's benefiting the guests with more options. It's benefiting, um, especially when the city's so busy. Um, it's been, and so it's benefiting Uber to have more um, vehicles to, to give to these guests. And then it's benefiting our drivers. Well, right now, Uber Taxi cannot pick up riders at the Orlando International Airport. Both companies are still working out the logistics with that, but they hope to roll that out sometime next month. So what do riders think about this new option? Well, we'll hear from some of them coming up at 530. Julie. Well, all right, Amanda, we'll see you then. Thank you. Divers are hard at work cleaning up part of Silver Glen. The National Forests in Florida posted these pictures to their Twitter account. It shows a diver removing buckets of rocks that were blocking the spring's vents, which are located in Marion County. Divers will be working to remove more rocks through next Tuesday. And I don't know if you've ever been to Silver Glen. It is mm -mm. so beautiful. It looks there. beautiful yeah, in so those pictures. Wonderful. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells joining us now. Our weather was beautiful today. Tomorrow. Yeah. Different story. Yeah. We got big trouble brewing right here in River City. Let me take you on over and talk about where we're going from here. Storm Prediction Center has put us in the slight category for severe tomorrow. That means chances are pretty good we'll have some action from Ocala all the way down to Fort Pierce. But just to the north of here, the tip of Marion County all the way to Gainesville, that's enhanced. It's going to really pound up there. You're closer to the lift. You'll have more scattered shower activity farther to the north. Don't get me wrong, cold front's going to swing through here, and we may end up with strong to severe thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. But the farther you go to the north in our state, the more likely it is you'll hit a really rough storm. Now, here's radar tonight. All is good. All is kind of quiet. Sea breeze showers haven't really kicked in yet from the coast to Orlando. They will later when the two sea breezes finally collide. But the big story will remain the storms out west as that cold front is marching ever closer to Central Florida. See the big action right now from New Orleans along I-10 all the way up to Jackson, Mississippi. We showed you this earlier. These red boxes, all of those are tornado warnings. The yellow box you see in here, those are severe thunderstorms. And the green, all of that is flood advisory stuff that's up 
already as this thing, it's been up for 24 hours. They put it up yesterday, but as this big bulk of moisture is rolling in. For you at home tonight, no worries on this night. I mean, there may be a few little scattered showers that break out later, but right now we're good. Nothing happening. You have a chance to get out. Kids can practice. You can mow the lawn. Whatever you've got to get done, get it done. Wind support in Orlando is in the south at six miles per hour. Look at Daytona Beach. I mean, that looks perfect, doesn't it? Sure it does. Temperature readings 81. Relative humidity is 74%. Across the interior, Orlando Health Camera, we're fine. A little, few little puffy clouds are out there waiting on the sea breezes to collide and give them some lift. Fire off a few showers. 89 currently in Orlando. It's just hot. I mean, really flat out hot. 87 Ocala. Same in Leesburg. 89 from Orlando to 88 in Kissimmee and 84 in Melbourne. How hot is it really? Well, compared to yesterday, it is really hot. We're four degrees warmer right now from Ocala to the villages than we were yesterday at the same time. Eight degrees warmer in Sanford, five degrees warmer in Orlando, and three degrees warmer in Melbourne. Our dark areas of rust and black colors here on the water vapor shot, well, those are leaving us as the abundant moisture is rolling in. That's where the water is right now through Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. On the way to see us as our ridge of high pressure gives way and the southerly flow really has warmed us up today. Here's the breakout for tomorrow. Come watch this. Now tonight, little pockets of rain between about 8, 9, 10, 11, then they calm down. But the big rocking stuff is tomorrow. Here comes the cold front. This is 3 p.m. Scattered showers already developing out in front of the mess. Then between 3 and 6, it approaches downtown Orlando. There are the villages all the way to Tampa. Boom! There it is at 6 p.m. into Orange County, Seminole County. 8 p.m. the first round is over and another round of lighter storms comes in right behind that for 8, 9, 10, and as late as 11 that could be lingering on our east coast. Through the day on Saturday, a few pockets of rain linger, but the sun takes over and the rest of your weekend's good. 72 tonight in Orlando. Here is tomorrow. Okay, we just addressed this. Our rain chances build by noon, really pound between noon and 3 and 6. Daytime high 86. Check out the week ahead. High tomorrow 86 degrees with rain chances at 90%. It's good Friday. It's the beginning of Passover. It's a storm alert day. Come Saturday, the high 75 Sunday for Easter Sunday. Yay! 78 for Peter Cottontail. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tom. Get weather on the go anytime with your smartphone. Download the free News 6 Pinpoint Weather app. Just search WKMG in your app store. Well, it is supposed to be the next step for smartphones, but it is already not testing well. The new Samsung smartphone that folds is set to hit the market next week, but a lot of tech reviewers say it malfunctioned after only a day or two. The issue Samsung is facing next at four. And here's what investigator Lewis Bolden is working on for tonight at five. Are you sick of the construction on I-4, tired of the backups, and in some cases, the damage to your car? The current project is expected to be completed in 2021, but the key word is expected. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there is more to come. Much more, a whole lot more. I'm investigator Lewis Bold, and I'll have the story for you tonight in less than an hour at five. You're watching News 6 at 4, getting results. We will be right back. Yes for less. Well, Samsung is back in the hot seat less than three years after a scandal involving the recalled Galaxy Note 7 and its exploding battery. Samsung is playing defense yet again. The much anticipated Samsung Galaxy Fold is getting bad reviews. A few people who received it early are saying there are problems with the screen. Tom Hansen takes a look at the new $2,000 phone. Samsung is trying to open a new era for phones with the Galaxy Fold, but with the release date fast approaching, several tech experts who were sent the phone to review are seeing serious issues. The inside display is no longer working. Uh, the left side is just flashing. Problems started for Bloomberg's Mark Gurman when he took off a protective layer. Samsung says you're not supposed to peel off the protective layer, but I did because it appeared like any other protective layer that comes on the front of the phone. After that, the screen no longer worked. In a statement, Samsung says we will thoroughly inspect these units in person to determine the cause of the matter. So far, this review unit has been completely fine. We haven't experienced those problems. CNET's Jessica Dahlcourt was also sent the fold. She says right now problems seem isolated to a few phones. Samsung continues to take pre-orders and is sticking with its plan to start selling the fold on April 26th. 
Samsung's not going to postpone. They're going to go full steam ahead, and that's because it's very important for them to be a fast mover in this space. Foldable phones are coming. It's not just Samsung making them. There are other companies too. Huawei, TCL, we know that Apple and LG are looking into it. Dahlcourt says if you're thinking of getting a Fold, you might want to wait a little bit to make sure glitches in these devices aren't widespread. Tom Hansen, CBS News, New York. Yeah, you would hope so if you spend $2,000 on yeah. that. Coming up all new on News 6 at 430, plastic straws on the chopping block. What other popular items one local city wants to do away with? Also, that is not a game of Frogger, just how hard it is for one local officer to make it across the street and how he is trying to get results for other pedestrians. Plus, a shooting and a motorcycle chase ending with a canine getting beat up, where officers were finally able to track down the suspect. Getting results on News 6 at 4. Keep it here. We'll be right back. Savings on Edge. Live, this is News 6. New on News 6 at 430, two local cities putting families on alert about a possible door-to-door -door scheme. This after both the city of Umatilla and Eustis say people have reported people approaching homes claiming there's a boil water notice in their area. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Julie Broughton. They are going as far as asking for water samples in this. I'm Lisa Bell. Ginger Gadsden is off. News 6's Nadine Giannis is in Lake County with the latest on this investigation. Hi, how are you? The interaction is all but 30 seconds long. Uh, my name is Ava. There's currently a boil water notice in your area. Have you received it? No. Okay, that's not a problem. I'm actually here just to grab a sample of your water. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay, not a problem. Thank you. But enough to prompt Kimberly Stearns to double check with the city of Umatilla. And I was like, mm, no. So, but I did want to verify with the city first. Who told her there was no boil water notice and to call police. Because you don't know their intentions. So it was more of, okay, are they going to get into somebody's house? Is somebody not home? Um, is there an elderly per I mean, the world is is crazy these days. You just don't know. Turns out the city of Umatilla got five similar calls from residents and the city of Eustis posted an alert too. There they say people are actually claiming to be city employees. The common sense part of me said they're not going to send somebody door to door to get water samples for the city. Umatilla officials say an officer found the women who told them they worked for Perina water softening systems but did not have a permit to do door to door sales. The city calling their tactics a scheme, using a fake boil water alert as a scare tactic. It's better safe than sorry. If they are a water company, great. Um, maybe they'll do business a little bit more honest when they come to somebody's door. And if they're not a water company, then everyone's aware. That was Nadine Giannis reporting, and we looked at the name of the company the women said they worked for, and that company was not listed as a registered business in Florida. Eustis police tell us it appears they are looking for different suspects than the ones described in Umatilla. Here's what it looks like for you as we take a live look outside over downtown Orlando. Nice mix of sun and clouds out there. Things are looking nice and calm. If you've been outside today, you can feel the breeze. Changes are coming and tomorrow is expected to be a very different story. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell's pinpointing the potential of some severe weather. Indeed, it will be totally different by this time tomorrow. The approach of the storms will be here by midday. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Tonight, we're watching our East Coast Sea Breeze beginning to kick in. See that seam right there? That's the East Coast Sea Breeze. West Coast Sea Breeze is about right here. The two will do a little dance later tonight. We'll fire it up and get some storms going. That is not the big stuff. The big stuff is way back out there. Louisiana, Mississippi rolling towards Alabama right now. We've had storms from Houston all the way up to Memphis, Tennessee. This is what it looks like on satellite. This is what it looks like on radar. Much more impressive to see the radar imagery along Interstate 59 all the way into New Orleans. Rip away the Radar echoes and look at those red boxes. One, two, three, four, five different tornado warnings are going on right now. And that's the same system that will swing that cold front toward us tomorrow. Standing by right now in the storm tracking center is meteorologist Candace Campos to talk about 
local impacts. Hello, yeah. Candace. Well, Tom, we are breaking it down county by county, and it all is going to work from north to south. So starting off, Marion, Lake, and Sumter County. So rain rates, we are talking about an inch, about an inch and a half after it's all said and done. Large hail will be possible. We're talking one to two inch sized hail with the chance of a few rotating storms. We are under the enhanced risk for strong to severe storms for this area with very strong winds, damaging winds potentially up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour. A bit further south and in in Seminole, Orange, and Osceola County, where you're looking at rainfall totals of up to about three quarters of an inch with hail up to about an inch. We're talking P to dime sized hail. Your tornado risk will be a little lower, but the winds are still going to be gusting, especially as that line moves through with winds between about 15 to 20 miles per hour. And then for folks along the coastline, your rain rates between about a half of an inch to about a quarter of an inch. Small hail will be possible. Not a good day to be out on the boat or on the beach. We have a small craft advisory and gale wind warnings in effect along uh, the coastline. Winds up to about 25 miles per hour. But as Tom's mentioning, after Friday, the weather will be changing to a much better weather for the holidays. I'll have, he'll have more on that coming up in just a couple minutes. Candace, thank you. This smiling suspect is behind bars, accused of shooting into a house, then hopping on his motorcycle and speeding off. And it didn't end there. And he's probably doing uh, at least 80 to 100. Melbourne police say it all started around 1130 last night on Buick Avenue. They say after Philip Spurlock fired shots into a house, he sped off. A Brevard County chopper not far behind. They say he ditched his bike on Lillian Drive, then started running into people's yards before trying to hide behind an air conditioning unit. A canine spotted him. That's when investigators say Spurlock grabbed the dog around his neck and started fighting it. Eventually, he let go of the canine and was taken into custody. He now faces several charges. Developing right now, an attempted murder suspect arrested. The other still on the run. DeLand police say Damon Ward is connected to a January shooting in the Candlelight Oaks neighborhood. Police are still searching for 18-year-old Stephen Bruton, who they say was also involved. If you know anything about this shooting or where Bruton could be, you're asked to call police. A Kissimmee police officer almost gets hit by a car while trying to protect pedestrians. This video was shot today while officers were taking part in Operation Best Foot Forward. The focus was on reminding drivers to pay attention and stop for pedestrians in the crosswalk. But as you can see, that was not the case on Thacker Avenue near Kissimmee Elementary. Officers say they issued 31 citations today. Now to a traffic alert that could catch you off guard. It involves one of the most congested exits on I-4. The eastbound exit to South Street is combined with the exit to the 408. This is part of the I-4 Ultimate Project. Today was the first time drivers took the combined ramp. Now an extra 12,000 drivers will be funneled into this exit every day. That's according to transportation officials. Some saying this change could take some getting used to. They were kind of freaking out how to get on the 408, I think, because it was split at the last second, so I didn't think they knew where to go. The left lane will take you on to the 408. The right lane is what will bring you down into South Street. The ramp to the 408 is now a quarter mile sooner and is expected to cause some major gridlock. Transportation officials say make sure you pay close attention and give yourself extra time. Expect a few other road closures downtown. They start tonight for the corporate 5K. You can see a map and full list of this weekend's events. Just go to clickorlando.com slash traffic. In less than an hour and a half, students and loved ones will gather to remember an Orange County teacher and coach killed in an accident last week. 27-year-old Brian Knapp died in an ATV crash. Knapp taught at Jones High School in Orlando and was also a coach. A celebration of life for Knapp will be held tonight in the school's auditorium starting at 6 o'clock. New at 4.30, a new proposal could be the beginning of the end for plastic straws and styrofoam in one local city. New Smyrna Beach, new Smyrna Beach Be is considering a ban on certain plastics at city events. New 6's Clay Lepard explains what this all could mean. New Smyrna Beach is preparing for tonight's annual food festival, but big changes could be coming to food trucks and other businesses that serve food throughout the city. The beach bum is our most popular. There are still plastic straws at Go Juice here on Flagler Avenue. Would anybody else like a beach bum? But they're about to go, adding to this business's effort to reduce pollution. All of our to-go products are completely 
made out of cornstarch and are compostable. All over the country, we are seeing more and more businesses and cities saying goodbye to some plastics. Disney announced last year they would phase out single-use straws and plastic stirrers, adding their name to a list of companies including Starbucks, SeaWorld, and McDonald's. Now, New Smyrna Beach's Neighborhood Council will ask what locals think about a proposal that would ban plastic straws and styrofoam used by contractors and vendors on city property. They never disappear. The working theory right now is that every single piece of plastic that has ever been produced is still on this planet in some form or another. Jesse Wales with Marine Discovery Center. So these are some of the sandwich containers. Says this proposal has the potential to be an important first step for the community. Plastic is a huge issue for our area and the world in general. If it passes, it would not affect private businesses in the city. There's constantly plastic that is washing up on our shorelines, plastic that's being left behind from weekend vacationers. There's always plastic on the beaches. There's no shortage of it. A sentiment many are starting to see and embrace along the shoreline. Well, we, we are right on the beach, so we do feel like it's our responsibility to take part in our community and our environment when we can. In New Smyrna Beach, Clay Lepard getting results News 6. Now, that presentation and discussion is set to take place on Monday at 6 at New Smyrna Beach City Hall. But first, we pose the question to you, our viewers. Do you think straws should be banned on New Smyrna Beach property? Here's what some of you had to say about it on our Facebook page. Tracy Tony Camito says they should be banned everywhere. But Charlene Wilburn says, no, I don't think everyone should be punished for drinking out of straws on the beaches or anywhere else. Why don't we enforce the little litter laws a bit more? Well, I don't think it's a matter of being punished. It's just a matter of eliminating them. Right. Because you see that. I go back to that mm -hmm. video of that turtle with that plastic straw yes. stuck up its nose. And the sad thing is, as you say, well, people need to do a better job. Well, they're not. And if you go to the beach, especially in the morning, you see all yeah, the trash that's washed mm -hmm. ashore. And it's just disgusting. And so if we just eliminate it, maybe it'll clean up the yeah. beaches and be safer for the marine life a little yeah, bit. One step at a time, right? Yeah. You can join the conversation on our Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com slash news six. The Mueller report is out and it's not just focused on the president. Why one Florida county was also mentioned. Also, he helped save soccer players from a cave in Thailand. Now, this man, trapped for over 24 hours, had to be rescued himself. How a Florida man helped save his life. And panic at a police station. How officers responded when a man rushed in with a choking infant. You're watching News 6 at 430, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is sponsored by Papa John's. Live with Ginger Gadsden, Lisa Bell, Julie Broughton. Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells and Meteorologist Candace Campos. This is News 6 at 4 getting results. The Mueller report is out. We've been sifting through the Robert through Robert Mueller's redacted report since its release this morning. The 400 page report looks into Russian interference in the 2016 election. It's broken into two parts. The special counsel looking into obstruction of justice. Mueller saying he was unable to reach a conclusion. The second part looks into collusion with Russia. Mueller and his team found that members of the Trump campaign knew they would benefit from Russia's actions to influence the election, but they did not take criminal steps to help. We searched through to see how many, how Florida may have been involved in the investigation. The state has mentioned around 30 times one line saying the FBI believes the Russians hacked, quote, at least one Florida county. The special counsel ultimately leaving it up to Attorney General William Barr to decide what to do with this information. I don't think anyone has taken issue, including me, with Mr. Mueller. He is certainly above reproach himself. Um, and that's why we need to hear directly from him, because unfortunately, Attorney General Barr is compromised and essentially has decided to manipulate the, uh, the interpretation of the report rather than making sure that the American people have a chance to get a transparent look at it. Congressional Democrats are now requesting Mueller's testimony before Congress. You can read the full redacted report for yourself. Just go to ClickOrlando.com. You'll find it right there on our homepage. 
We are learning new details about a man arrested with two cans of gas, some lighter fluid and a lighter at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. Police say Mark Lamparello had been arrested at a New Jersey cathedral just a few days ago and also had a flight booked to Italy. Lamparello was arrested after a security guard noticed him trying to bring the suspicious items into the church last night and pouring gas on the floor. Police say he told them he was out of gas and just cutting through the building. But after following him back to his car, they realized that was not the case. This comes just days after the massive fire nearly destroyed Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral. A Florida man gets results for a trapped diver. Josh Brashley was stuck for more than 24 hours in an underwater cave in Tennessee. Now that's an odd position for him, considering he was one of the men who helped rescue a Thai soccer team from a cave just last year. But yesterday, he was the one who needed saving. It all started Tuesday when Bratchley and four other experienced divers were exploring a cave. When the group came out, they realized Bratchley was missing. Ed Sorensen, a rescue diver from Florida, flew to Tennessee. Once he reached the cave, it took him less than an hour to get to Bratchley, who was in a large air pocket in a dry suit. He looked like the snowman, but of mud. He was head to toe mud. There was maybe a couple spots on his cheeks that were not covered in mud. And I mean, I mean covered. Authorities say Bratchley was awake and alert as he waited to be rescued. They say his only request when he got to the surface was that he wanted <laughs> some pizza. I also read that he was saying that his friends were never going to let him hear the end of this, but at least he is out ready to eat pizza and okay. That is the good news exactly. in all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so weird to think he could go all the way to Thailand and save somebody and they get lost like that in a Tennessee cave. It just shows how dangerous it really yeah. can be. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Right? Yeah, I'm going to pass as well. Chief right. meteorologist Tom Swirls joining hey. us now. The weather could be very dangerous come tomorrow. It can indeed. Now let's yeah. talk about that for a minute because we may get warnings, we may not. We're mm -hmm. in the slight category for severe, but it only takes, as we say, one hurricane to wreck exactly. a season. It only takes one storm or one lightning strike mm -hmm. to take you. It is yeah. going to be storming for a while tomorrow. Whether we get severe thunderstorm warnings or not, whether we get rotation or not, there will be rain aplenty and lightning aplenty too. So keep your eye to the sky. Troy will be in here first thing in the morning. He'll be forecasting those storms as they come across the Gulf and start making their way into Florida. I'll be here in the afternoons. So all you have to do is either look at the app or click us on, and we will be here. Tonight, breezy with some showers possible. We're waiting for the sea breezes to collide. I will show you that in just a moment. For tomorrow, heavy to severe storms are expected. I'll pinpoint what time in just a moment. Come the weekend, storm's gone. Yeah, sunshine returns. We've got a beautiful day coming on for Easter Sunday. Take a look at radar right now. Where's the rain? Well, certainly not here. I cranked up the gain on radar so you can try to figure out where the East Coast sea breeze is. You can pick it out right here. See that little seam? Trying to work its way in. That's the East Coast Seabreeze beginning to get lined up just a bit. It's not producing any showers on its own. It's already pushed about right here, approaching downtown Orlando. So it's breezy, and the sea breeze is on the way. Once it hits the West Coast Sea Breeze later tonight, we will get a few little showers. Nothing like this, though. Here's the gigantic mess that's rocking right now from Meridian, Mississippi to Jackson, all the way down to New Orleans. And there are all kinds of warnings going on with this tonight. Squall line is approaching Hattiesburg, Mississippi right now. Here's Meridian right there. Here's Quitman right there. Here's I-59 all the way down to Laurel. Some of the areas, well, here we go. Let me back up. Here's Macomb, Mississippi here. Just to the east of Macomb, one tornado warning there, another one there, another one there. So three tornado warnings still going on right now in Mississippi. This is a pretty tough cold front. It's going to cause some ruckus here tomorrow. Right now, we're at 81 degrees in Daytona Beach. Temperatures along the coast in the low 80s. 83 in Titusville, Melbourne, we're at 84. In Orlando, close to 90. We're at 89 right now and 89 in Sanford as well. Wind speed, the support is still from the south in most areas, but a 17 mile per hour wind right now along the coast in Bavard County. There's the system right there with the abundant moisture. Here's the breakout for tonight and to tomorrow. Now you see a few little pockets of rain late night tonight and overnight. But the big danger is tomorrow. Here's three o'clock in the afternoon. Here's five. Take a look at six to seven. More scattered showers rolling through. And then by eight o'clock, we're winding it down. And the big danger will be over. Saturday's looking good and Sunday looks even better. Your low tonight is 72. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by your Central Florida Honda dealers. Breakout for the day tomorrow pushes the high to 86, but it rocks. The big thunderstorms by midday. Check out the week ahead. 
Your daytime high tomorrow goes to 86 degrees with rain chances 90%. Saturday and Sunday look so much better. Easter Sunday, the high is 78. And all next week looks amazing. You just have to get through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Get Pinpoint Weather on the go with our free News 6 Pinpoint Weather app. Our team keeps you up to date around the clock. Plus, use live interactive radar. Just search WKMG in your app store. Well, if you haven't yet, make sure to check out our new podcast, Florida Foodie. It explores the big picture of food here in Florida. This week, Candace Campos is talking with two groups looking to break a world record to get results for the health of people all across Central Florida. You can check it out at quickorlando.com slash podcasts. Still to come, nice or necessary? We break down what you need to know about using your turn signal. Also, how officers got results for a choking baby just in the nick of time. And are you sick of the construction on I-4? Are you tired of the backups and in some cases the damage to your car? The current project is expected to be completed in 2021, but there is much more to come. Investigator Lewis Bolden will tell you about I-4 and beyond ahead at 5. Let me the RV. Get click -O on the go. Top stories and weather in less than two minutes. Find out at News 6 WKMG on Snapchat and Instagram. Some dramatic new video shows the moment police save a choking baby. This was in Brazil. A man rushes in with the infant in his arms and hands them to an officer. The officer tries to revive the three-week-old as a woman paces around the room. After a few seconds, you can see the officer listening to the baby breathing. The little boy was then taken to the hospital and is doing okay. Wow. In Florida, it can be hard to tell. Is using your turn signal courteous or mandated? Is it hard to tell? I thought we had to. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. News 6's Trooper Steve has what you need to know. Linda of Waterford Lakes asked, can I get a ticket for not using my turning signal? And if you drove around Central Florida, you think you couldn't get a ticket for as many people that don't use this indicator right here. 316.155 says you have to use your turning signal, really all the time. This is in every single vehicle. It's there so you can use it. You have to activate that turning signal 100 feet prior to either turning left or turning right. A good way to estimate that is about six vehicles bumper to bumper lined up. And a good rule of thought is if you are applying your brake on your car, it's already too late. That turning signal should be already on there. Now you can receive a ticket for it and it would cost you over $160. Ask Trooper Steve is sponsored by Alert Today Florida. Every pedestrian and bicyclist is important to someone. So stay alert because safety doesn't happen by accident. If you have a question you want to ask Trooper Steve, go to clickorlando.com slash ask Trooper Steve. My driver's ed teacher used to always say, I don't hear clicking if you didn't hear the and so well, that, was that is my, my husband's head. biggest pet peeve is not using as he likes to call it your indicator oh, <laughs> that's funny but here's uh, the problem you turn you put your turn signal on to change lanes uh -huh. and everybody speeds correct. up correct that's annoying as well that should be illegal <laughs> yes, yes yes it should yes get Matt, to talk about that one. <laughs> Matt Austin is here with what's coming up on news six at five hey coming up at five excitement is building ahead of game three for the Orlando Magic we got to look inside to see what fans can expect at the Amway and one week later, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy booster returns to the port, had a little trouble at sea, and what visitors are saying about all this. Live, getting results. This is News 6 at 5. Now at 5, a booster's return. The Falcon Heavy center core rocket is back at Port Canaveral after toppling over at sea. Plus, losing control, spin it out. On US 1, spun out. An armed and dangerous driver goes on a wild chase. Put your hands behind your back. Roll on. The body cam video of his arrest in minutes. First, the possible relief under the roaring sounds of planes. This is News 6 at 5. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Lisa Bell. Noise complaints near Orlando International Airport are on the rise. Thousands of people fly into the airport every day. And tonight, the Federal Aviation Authority is talking safety in the sky. The noise issue could also take center stage. New Six's Jerry Askin is getting results in Winter Park, where that meeting is about to happen. And Jerry, you said within just 10 minutes near the airport, 
Two planes flew over one man's home. What is he saying about the noise? Lisa, yes, and that man hopes that actually um, the issue of loud noise will be discussed at tonight's meeting. It's happening here at 6 p.m. at the Winter Park Community Center, and the FAA is hosting that meeting to discuss possible changes to the air traffic control system. Oh, it's very loud, and it'll vibrate the windows sometimes in the house. We talked to many residents today who live near Orlando International Airport. Like, woo. Their biggest concern, the loud noise caused by planes soaring high above their homes multiple times a day. Because it's too loud. Too loud. And that bothers you. And that's a, a daytime. Imagine nighttime. Joe Vecalucci has lived here at his home for 35 years. We saw two planes today within 10 minutes flying over his home. Some of them come a lot lower and of course a lot louder. I guess it depends on the type of aircraft also. They're both, like many residents, hoping the issue of loud noise will be discussed at today's community workshop hosted by the Federal Aviation Authority. The meeting we know is set to discuss proposed FAA new traffic control procedures and get community feedback on enhancing safety in the air. We got these maps today. It shows you some proposed changes, and it could mean flights flying more efficiently. It, it tremendously violated the areas that were close in to the airport. At a meeting at OIA yesterday, the Noise Abatement Board showed maps like the one here of loud noise over homes in Orlando, and documents show there were more than 200 complaints from 40 households in February and March. I'd like to see them move the, uh, you know, the, the landing flights, paths. So they're not as close to residential areas. And I'm told no changes were going to affect until 2021. And again, the issue of loud noise is one of many topics that will be discussed at tonight's meeting. I just spoke with the FAA spokesperson here in the past hour. I'm putting together his interview for News 6 at 6 o'clock. We're live in Winter Park tonight. Jerry Askin getting results. News 6. Jerry, thank you. Now, this report on noise levels was presented to the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority yesterday. You can read it all right now on ClickOrlando.com. Just look for it on the home page. Developing tonight now, we're keeping an eye on the radar. Right now, it's hot, beautiful out there, but you need to keep an eye on the skies tomorrow. Let's get you straight over to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. He's pinpointing the storm's arrival. Yes, Matt, it's going to be a storm alert day for tomorrow because the big scattered showers will be rocking by midday, rolling in the northern parts of our viewing area from Gainesville to Ocala by midday tomorrow. So I expect things to really start to kick in. Tonight, we're pinpointing the sea breeze activity here, already making its way into Seminole and Orange counties. We'll see a few scattered showers later from that. But the big news is what happens tomorrow. And right now it's in Mississippi, Louisiana, and it's ugly. Nothing happening close to home, but take a look. See the sea breeze there with the big storms here approaching Hattiesburg, Mississippi, along I-59. That's the cold front that's going to march our way tomorrow. Right now, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, and flood problems from Meridian to equipment all the way down to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. What's the timing on all this? When does it get here? Well, I'll run the whole day through for you and pinpoint its arrival step by step in minutes. Tom, thank you. A redacted report of Robert Mueller's investigation is now public. Lawmakers on both sides are now using the findings to amplify well-rehearsed arguments about the president's conduct, Republicans casting him as a victim of harassment. Democrats depicting the president as stepping over the line to derail the investigation. Kristen Holmes has the new reaction. The Russian government sponsored efforts to illegally interfere with the 2016 presidential election, but did not find that the Trump campaign or other Americans colluded in those efforts. Special counsel Robert Mueller's partially redacted report noting the Trump campaign showed interest in emails stolen from Democrats by Russians meant to hurt Hillary Clinton, but found no evidence of a crime. That is something that all Americans can and should be grateful to have confirmed. On the question of obstruction of justice, Mueller is less clear. His report identifying 10 instances where the president or his aides may have attempted to curtail the investigation, <laughs> including firing former FBI director James Comey. The evidence developed by the special counsel is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. According to the report, once the president found out about Mueller's appointment, he said, quote, this is the end of my presidency. That was not the reaction of the president that day when I was there. Today, just moments after the report's release, 
Trump claimed victory. No collusion, no obstruction. <laughs> Congressional Democrats wanting more answers, calling on Mueller to testify publicly. The special counsel made clear that he did not exonerate the president, and the responsibility now falls to Congress to hold the president accountable for his actions. In Washington, I'm Kristen Holmes reporting. And you can read the report as well as get updates on this developing story right now at clickorlando.com. Just look under the politics tab. Some dramatic body and helicopter video new at five tonight. A guy wanted for selling heroin and fentanyl takes off from deputies. Air One video shows him driving on I-95. This right here is near Ormond Beach. And this guy's not stopping. You can see him swerving in and out of traffic. At one time, he drives on the shoulder. Deputies eventually catch up to him and use stop sticks along Old Dixie Highway, just north of Ormond Beach. Almost signal forward. Uh, he's losing control. Spinning out. So when that does not work, he just keeps on driving. He drives the wrong way on an exit ramp before getting back on I-95. This guy then gets out and runs into a wooded area right off Nova Road. Never pays to run. Bijan Johnson was arrested after being bitten by a canine. Deputies found a bunch of stuff in his car, including a gun and some drugs. He's in jail tonight. His bond is set at more than $1 million. An inappropriate comment lands the Mount Dora Public Safety Director on paid leave. An investigation found John O'Grady, who is also Mount Dora's police chief, made a racially insensitive comment when presenting an award last week. The Hispanic couple who was supposed to receive that award was not present at the time. That's when an attorney for the couple says O'Grady told a Hispanic officer to accept the award for them because they were, quote, the same. In a statement, the city of Mount Dora said the remarks do not reflect the city's values, principles or ideals. The couple's attorney said they want an apology from the chief. Right now, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy Center Core booster is back at Port Canaveral. After a little trouble at sea, the booster tipped over after landing on a drone ship following last week's launch. News 6's James Barbero is at Port Canaveral with the details. This afternoon, we wait for a Port Canaveral crane to raise the toppled Falcon Heavy booster, the center core of the most powerful rocket in the world, falling over during a rough return to the port on the high seas. New 6 is told SpaceX will potentially only be able to reuse the booster's nine engines. Elon Musk's company will analyze the debris to determine the wear and tear. Did you hear what happened to the booster? It seems yeah. to have had a rough trip back. Fell over. Things happen. They did their best and it made out well anyway. Some guests at the port see it as a learning experience for SpaceX. They win some and lose some. That's all. all right. It's exciting. It's, it's incredible. Other tourists, like these friends from the Midwest, weren't in town for last week's launch, so any chance to see the rocket at all is a thrill. I can't wait to get pick it up. I just came down to for Florida for, for some sun and fun, not, but I'm getting a great education and a history in the making. Falcon Heavy made history indeed. Last Thursday, in its second flight, SpaceX successfully landed all three rocket boosters. The side boosters at Cape Canaveral, the center booster here at the port today on the drone ship in the ocean. The recovered side boosters will fly again on a future SpaceX mission. About the center booster, we do not have word from the port right now when exactly SpaceX will raise it. At Port Canaveral, I'm James Sparvero, getting results news 6. Hey, we're about 24 hours away from Game 3 for the Orlando Magic. The team heads home after an upset in Game 2 against Toronto. Leaders at the Amway Center are ready to get fans excited. Crews laid out blue and white t-shirts on chairs this afternoon. People will also get some cool light-up wristbands. Tomorrow's game starts at 7 o'clock. Well, half human and half horse. The creature featured in an area attraction, we'll explain it, coming up. Plus a breakthrough in the fight against the so-called bubble boy disease. What doctors have discovered that could save the lives of kids. Lewis. I'm investigator Lewis Bolden. Are you sick of the construction on I-4? People are stuck in traffic right now, and we found out there is more to come. The story is coming up. You're watching News 6 at 5, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is sponsored by Subway. 
I'm News 6 meteorologist Candace Campos. We are going to be dealing with some strong storms for tomorrow, but it will make way for some beautiful weather just in time for the holidays this weekend. One event that's big across Central Florida is the 65th annual Easter egg hunt out there in Winter Park in the Central Park area from 9 a.m. to noon. Look at your temperatures. So spring like 64 to about 73 degrees will be our temperatures throughout the egg hunt. The wind's moving in from the north about five miles per hour. Really nice weather. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells will have more coming up in minutes. Total savings on edge. Live with Matt Austin, Lisa Bell. Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells, Meteorologist Candace Campos, special reports from the investigators, and getting crime results with Eric Von Anken. This is News 6 at 5, getting results. Are you sick of the construction on I-4? Let me answer that for you. <laughs> yes. The current project is expected to be completed in 2021. But as News 6 investigator Lewis Bolden found out, there is more to come and you might not even know it. It really sucks. Construction sucks. People don't know how to drive and it makes it worse. The I-4 Ultimate project currently under construction is a 21 mile stretch from 434 to the north to Kirkman Road to the south. It started in 2015, and drivers say not only have their nerves been affected, their vehicles have too. Rocks, tiny rocks hit my windshield and my car. Rudell Mack says he no longer drives I-4 because of damage to his car. I guess from all the dump trucks or whatever it is, they whatever they're doing, and the rocks coming off the truck bouncing, bouncing on the road, so they all of a sudden they hit your car. And the growing pains won't stop anytime soon. It feels like it's going to last forever and it's never going to be done because once they finish it, they're going to start more. That's right. The Department of Transportation will soon be looking beyond the 21 miles currently under construction to another 20 miles to the north and 20 miles south, according to Steve Olson with DOT. You're looking at congestion management. You're looking at efficiencies. You're looking at safety. It's called I-4 Beyond the Ultimate, and there is already a website, renderings, and animation to let the public know. It's never ending. The southern end of I-4 Beyond runs west of Kirkman Road and State Road 535 in Orange County through part of Osceola County, just west of the State Road 25 US 27 interchange. The idea is to get through the Disney area, which is a notorious bottleneck. It will include major intersection overhauls, including Sand Lake Road and Darrell Carter Parkway. We want to make it less congested and see if we can get the traffic flowing. And also, you know, that, that increases safety. The northern end will stretch from State Road 434 in Seminole County to just east of State Road 472 in Volusia. It gets through the Volusia County Bridge, which is another major bottleneck to the north. What the Florida Department of Transportation is looking at is probably dividing these things up into smaller bite-sized units. The project will also include more express toll lanes, which some drivers are still on the fence about. I honestly don't know. It might make it better. It might make it worse. It might just be something we need to get used to. While it's all in the name of progress, Aviva Mucha says it comes with a price. You don't see any more of that nature anywhere. It's just when you're driving, it's just construction everywhere. And I-4 Beyond the Ultimate is costly, about $4.5 billion. Construction could extend another 10 to 15 years beyond the current project, which is expected to end in 2021. And coming up at 7, I'll tell you who will have the pleasure of dealing with it first, and we'll tell you how funding could delay it even further. Mm -hmm. So, Matt and Lisa, I guess I'm just the bearer of bad news today. Oh, you have a lot of reports left to give. <laughs> yes, Lisa. I, do. I can't <laughs> wait for the beyond the beyond the uh. ultimate. It's going to be a lot of fun. Lewis Bolden, thanks. Because then right. we're going to repave it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll need to by then. Yeah, Chief man. Meteorologist Tom Sorrell is joining us now with some more bad news, Tom. Well, yeah, not the best. I wish, you know, heading into... The Holy Weekend, we've got yeah. Passover starting tomorrow, we have Good Friday mm -hmm. tomorrow, and we have a weather alert day tomorrow. Yeah. It could get quite ugly at times. Take a look at what's happening right now. We're talking about a pretty good start to the day in most areas tomorrow. It's by midday into the afternoon that I have all my concerns. Mm -hmm. Daytona Shores over in Volusia County, Daytona Beach Shores, 8 a.m., 74 degrees. By noon, you're okay. 83. It's the afternoon for eastern Volusia County that things will fall apart. By 3 o'clock tomorrow, we'll be pinpointing scattered showers rumbling your way. 77 degrees by 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon and 76 at 6 p.m. Let's get down to Bavard County, Palm Bay. 69 degrees at 8 a.m. By noon tomorrow, Palm Bay, you're still 
looking good. It's going to be windy though. Wind will be pushing from the east, southeast and then southwest gusting up closer to 30 miles per hour than we got today. So 86 degrees by noon tomorrow in Palm Bay. By 3 p.m. tomorrow, about 81 with those big rocking storms rumbling your way. On to visible satellite imagery. Look at this. You see it right there, plain as day. Look at the texture and how ruffled it looks on the visible satellite image. All is good from about the line at the panhandle into Orlando and Jacksonville. But if you're watching and planning to drive tomorrow, you're going to cut right through this big mess. And it's a mess. Right now we have the East Coast Sea Breeze trying to get its act together, not producing any scattered showers yet. It will later, but it will pale in comparison to this mess that's happening here in Mississippi right now. You see the line of activity. That's our cold front that's coming our way. Right now it's producing tornado warnings from Philadelphia all the way down to Meridian, Mississippi. It's ugly. Farther to the south, the big tornado warning here just went away. Outside of Slidell, there's Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans in there with the flood advisory while here at home. We have no worries just yet. Temps all across the southeast in the 80s and look at Orlando. We just hit 90. That's our daytime high so far. Humidity is low, low, low. So we did make it to 90 in Orlando. 81 currently in Daytona Beach. We just talked about the temperatures here is at 90. So let's go to the uh, water vapor shot. You see the dry air beginning to check out on us with the moisture building in. Here's the most important thing you need to see. Yes, there will be little showers tonight, but here's tomorrow. 9 a.m. Here it comes. 4 p.m. It's there from Ocala to the villages to Sanford, rocking into Orange County and Seminole counties by about six o'clock. Seems to fall apart a bit, but it's going to be dangerously close to pounding on through here. And then for the rest of the weekend, well, it's all good to go. Tonight, we're talking about overnight lows that will fall on down into the. Well, that wasn't supposed to be this. I'll let you see it into the 70s. There you go. Daytime high tomorrow looks like this. Your forecast brought to you by Napleton Chrysler Jeep Dodge. 86 degrees the daytime high, but the pounding storms are here by midday. Check out the week ahead. 86 does it for your high tomorrow. The storms are the big deal. Saturday and Sunday both just look awesome. Easter Sunday, the daytime high is 78. I'm going to go back and kick my machine and make it work better next time, <laughs> but the storms are coming. I look forward to seeing that. Tom, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Tom. <laughs> coming up, more magic at an area theme park, the crossbow encounter with a magical creature. And coming up at 530, there's a plan to cut down on plastics in a part of our area. Hear from the people making the push to go green. Two overnight closures for you to be aware of. First one's going to be northbound Florida Turnpike right at Osceola Parkway. This one gets me every single night. What you're going to do is you're going to detour yourself west on Osceola Parkway, then head north on 441. That'll get you right around it. You can reconnect over at 528 from there. Also, eastbound I-4 right at Maitland Boulevard. This gets closed pretty routinely. Follow the detour, and it will get you right around that. I'm Trooper Steve with your New 6 Traffic Alert. I'll catch you in the morning. Hey, coming up at six in my news, six getting results award segment. Tax season may be over, but we're still recognizing the people who make a free government tax assistance program a success. I'm an old accounting teacher. <laughs> That's really what I am. She is a whole lot more than that. She is this week's getting results award winner, and she's helped taxpayers get more than $2 million in returns. That story coming up at six o'clock. Half human. Half horse. Universal gives us another look at their upcoming ride at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. They are called centaurs. They are the latest creature set to appear on the upcoming roller coaster Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Centaurs make their first appearance in the franchise in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. One of these centaurs stands at eight feet tall. The ride opens on June 13th. Researchers at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital say they have found a cure for the bubble boy disease. It was made famous by a documentary in the 1970s. Doctors say they used an experimental gene therapy technique to restore the immune system of 10 babies. Children who have the disease are susceptible to life-threatening conditions. Oftentimes, the kids never make it to the age of two. Doctors say the results are not showing any side effects. They hope to use this same type of technique to other genetic diseases like the sickle cell blood disorder. 
An early Easter surprise for kids at Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children in Orlando. The Easter Bunny Foundation and Orange County Sheriff John Mina stopped by to visit several kids. The two passed out dozens of stuffed bunnies while also bringing a smile to the kids' faces and their families. That is adorable. So sweet. Yes. I like the, belly, or the bunny's pink belly. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, Sheriff, cute. you don't want to be competing against the Easter Bunny. I can no. Tell you that. It's a losing proposition. <laughs> Julie Broughton joins us now with what's next at 530. The way people get around our area is undergoing a big change this weekend. Two former competitors are teaming up, making it easier to hitch a ride. We'll show you the changes coming to a popular ride sharing app. And a warning about a possible con. We'll tell you what to watch out for when people come knocking on your door. We're getting results on News 6. Keep it here. We'll be right back. Warehouse. Live, getting results. This is News 6 at 530. Now at 530, two former competitors plan to work together starting this weekend. And it could mean changes for how you get around. Find out what Uber and Mears' new partnership will mean for you. Plus, a warning in part of our area, be on the lookout for people looking to get water samples from inside your home. We've heard reports of this happening in at least two communities now. Glad you're with us. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Julie Broughton in for Ginger Gadsden tonight. One person managed to get video of two women who came to her door. This video was recorded on her doorbell camera. The homeowner tells us the women claimed there was a boil water advisory in her area and needed those samples. Investigators in Eustis and Umatilla both say they've received similar reports. News 6's Nadine Giannis tells us what you need to know to protect yourself and your family. So when you ring the doorbell, and then it automatically will start recording. Kimberly Stearns was hesitant to even open the doors when these two women walked up to her Umatilla home yesterday morning. My name is Ava. There's currently a boil water notice in your area. Have you received it? No. And even more hesitant to let them inside when they asked for a water sample. I'm actually here just to grab a sample of your water. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay, not a problem. Thank you. The interaction, though only 30 seconds long, suspicious enough for her to call the city of Umatilla. And I was like, mm, no. So, but I did want to verify with the city first. Who told her there was no boil water notice and to call police. Because you don't know their intentions. So it was more of, okay, are they going to get into somebody's house? Is somebody not home? Um, is there an elderly per I mean, the world is, is crazy these days. You just don't know. Turns out the city of Umatilla got five similar calls from residents and the city of Eustis posted an alert too. There, they say people are actually claiming to be city employees. The common sense part of me said they're not going to send somebody door to door to get water samples for the city. Umatilla officials say an officer found the women who told them they worked for Perina Water Softening Systems, but did not have a permit to do door to door sales. The city calling their tactics a scheme using a fake boil water alert as a scare tactic. It's better safe than sorry. If they are a water company, great. Um, maybe they'll do business a little bit more honest when they come to somebody's door. And if they're not a water company, then everyone's aware. In Umatilla, I'm Nadine Giannis getting results, News 6. Let's take a live look outside from our city camera. This is overlooking beautiful downtown Orlando. Really a nice end to the day, but the weather is set to take a big turn tomorrow. Here's a look at what's coming our way. This is video out of Texas and Oklahoma. Look at the cracked windshield there from the hail. The system dumped heavy rain and hail overnight. We're expecting Somewhat of a similar scene here, maybe in central Florida. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is pinpointing all of it for us, Tom. Man, I don't really anticipate that we're going to get window shattering hailstones here tomorrow, but we're in the slight category to marginal. So I think we're going to be okay, but just to the north of us, like you in Marion County, you are in the enhanced zone. So you might end up with some pretty doggone big storms and some of them could be rotating. We'll talk about it all. This is what it looks like on the visible satellite here at home. One lone shower beginning to show up along the sea breeze right there in the Orange County area. Here's the line, though, that was just producing those hailstones that you just saw in that video. From Meridian, Mississippi to Hattiesburg, it is bad, 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 bad right now. Tornado warning after tornado warning being issued right now from Philadelphia all the way just north of Meridian, Mississippi to DeKalb. It's tough. Quitman has a severe thunderstorm warning as well. And one more right there from Hattiesburg all the way down to the flooding problems into Seidel. Louisiana. It's, it's a mess.
Temperature readings, we have hit 90 in Orlando, so we're super hot. Waiting on the sea breeze showers to develop for tonight. Those are not as bad as the ones we're going to get for tomorrow. Tomorrow's an interesting day. Standing by with some of the information for tomorrow is meteorologist Candace Campos. Well, Tom, we are going to be taking it from north to south with our local impacts for your Friday. So we're talking Lake Sumter and Marion County for tomorrow. After about 2 o'clock, do expect rain rates about an inch to an inch and a half by the end of the whole event. Large hail between between about 1 to 2 inches. A few rotating storms will be possible with winds up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour. Further south across our inland counties between Seminole County, Orange and Osceola County, your rain could rack up to about three quarters of an inch with hail up to about one inch. We're talking P to dime sized hail. Low tornado risk will be expected for these three counties. Gusty at, at times, some damaging winds will be possible with winds between about 15 to 20 miles per hour. And then for folks along the coastline, we do have a small craft advisory. Gale wind warnings as the winds will be picking up up to about 25 miles per hour. Your rain totals at about a quarter of an inch with small hail possible. The good news is most of this will end by Friday afternoon. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell We'll be back pinpointing a very nice looking weekend ahead coming up in minutes. Candace, thank you. After two years of investigation, a redacted version of the Mueller report is now being scrutinized by lawmakers. Attorney General William Barr held a press conference today laying out the findings of the report. He said the report did find Russia meddled in the election, but could not establish that the Trump campaign or other Americans colluded in those schemes. On the issue of obstruction, the report points to 10 episodes for possible obstruction. That includes the president's firing of FBI Director James Comey. The White House says the report completely exonerates the president. You know what his greatest rebuttal will be? His greatest rebuttal will be he's in office, he's going to remain in office, and he'll get reelected because the Democrats have nothing. They banked everything on this. Democrats still want the full unredacted report released. Attorney General Barr is scheduled to testify publicly before the Senate Judiciary Committee next month about the report. You can read the redacted version of the Mueller report for yourself. We've posted a link to the document online at clickorlando.com. Hey, changes are coming this weekend to a popular ride-sharing app. Uber is turning to a former competitor, turning them into a partner, allowing you to catch a Mears taxi through the Uber app. News 6's Amanda Castro shows us what it means for people looking to get around Orlando. Riders have more options at their fingertips. Mirrors Transportation and Uber teaming up, launching the new Uber Taxi. Now riders in Orlando can get a taxi through the ride-sharing app. It's a great opportunity for both us and Uber. We get to supply, help them supply more for the demand. Rebecca Horton with Mirrors says the demand for transportation is high from both residents and visitors. And this new partnership serves that need, turning the companies who were once foes into friends. The Orlando-based taxi company spent years trying to prevent Uber from expanding into Central Florida. But last November, they announced they're teaming up with the goal of offering more options to riders. There's no reason that we shouldn't work together, um, and it's better for the guests because there's more opportunity for them to get transportation whenever they need it. Starting tomorrow, when you open the Uber app, you'll see the taxi option with the costs up front. Riders can also pay and tip through the app. Right now, the service is only in Orange County, and riders can't be picked up at the Orlando International Airport just yet. We hope to roll out the airport uh, mid-May. There's just some logistics that we still need to figure out. Uber riders tell us they're excited about this new opportunity. The taxi department has uh, kind of been struggling since Uber came along, so anyway, for them to partner up would be fantastic on that. Anytime I can make sure I'm getting the best deal and the best value, that's always a win situation for me. Uber adds that depending on how this new service goes, they could expand into Osceola and Seminole counties. Reporting in downtown Orlando, Amanda Castro getting results, News 6. A chase and a fight with a police dog came before this smiling mugshot. That's according to police. Melbourne officers arrested Philip Spurlock last night after responding to reports of someone firing shots into a home. Police say when they caught up with Spurlock, he was already on his bike and started speeding when he realized he was being followed. This is video from the Brevard County Sheriff's helicopter. Officers say the man ran into a backyard along Dorden Drive where he tried to hide. When a police dog went after him, Officers say he grabbed the animal around the neck. Eventually, police were able to cuff him. He's facing charges for shooting into a home and attacking a police dog. 
Now to a crime alert. Police want to find a pair of robbers seen on this surveillance video. Daytona Beach Police released this video from the Family Dollar on Mason Avenue. It all happened last night around 10. You can see two men in masks with guns threatening employees and demanding cash. The workers opened the register and the safe for the crooks who took off with the cash. If you recognize these guys, call Daytona Beach Police. The Coast Guard showing off an impressive haul here. This might not look like much in this picture, but you're looking at more than $62 million in drugs. The Coast Guard says it seized 14 grand, 14,000 pounds of pot, more than 3,600 pounds of cocaine. They took all the drugs that were headed to the U.S. from ships off the coast of Mexico, Central, and South America. The haul was unloaded today at Port Everglades in South Florida. Well, there is a push to make one city in our area more environmentally friendly. It's an effort we're seeing popping up in spots around the country. A proposal to ban straws and other single-use plastics, find out how it would work, and what it would mean for businesses in that part of our area. Plus, a bizarre brawl inside a restaurant. Hear how a man got his pet involved in the fight. Not a normal pet either. <laughs> You're watching News 6 at 530. Getting results for you tonight. We'll be right back. Florida Hospital is now Advent Health. The same doctors you know, the same care you trust. Caring for your body, mind, and spirit. Live with Matt Austin, Ginger Gadsden. Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell. This is News 6 at 530. Getting results. Breaking news now, man's in custody in connection with a string of arsons. The Lake County Sheriff's Office says James Anthony Bennett was involved in some of the nine fires set in the Umatilla area. I don't know if you remember this, but we first reported these fires in February. Deputies actually released surveillance video hoping someone could identify the guy at one point. No word if Bennett is the masked man in this video here. But Bennett is being charged with four counts of arson and two counts of armed burglary. He's being held on a $300,000 bond. The age to buy tobacco could soon rise across the country. Today, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced he is introducing legislation to raise the nationwide minimum age to buy tobacco products from 18 to 21. The bill, which will be introduced in May, will cover all tobacco products, including vaping devices. McConnell says that passing this bill is a top priority for him. Currently, Florida lawmakers are also considering a similar bill to raise the smoking age here to 21. You can read about that plan and where it stands in the legislature on ClickOrlando.com. Well, a dog is recovering this today after a fire. The Orlando Fire Department released these pictures showing firefighters giving the pup oxygen after it was hmm. breathing in smoke. The dog was pulled from a burning apartment on South Semeron Boulevard. Crews say no people were in the home at the time of the fire and no one else was hurt. All over the country, we're seeing more and more businesses and cities saying goodbye to some plastics. Disney announced last year that it would phase out single-use straws and plastic stirrers, adding their name to the list of companies, including Starbucks, SeaWorld, and McDonald's. News 6's Clay Lepart explains New Smyrna Beach leaders are considering whether or not to ban the use of certain plastic when it comes to city events. New Smyrna Beach is preparing for tonight's annual food festival, but big changes could be coming to food trucks and other businesses that serve food throughout the city. The beach bum is our most popular. There are still plastic straws at Go Juice here on Flagler Avenue. Would anybody else like a beach bum? But they're about to go, adding to this business's effort to reduce pollution. All of our to-go products are completely made out of cornstarch and are compostable. Earlier this month, New Smyrna Beach's City Commission approved a resolution that encourages residents and businesses to stop using one-time use plastics. Now they're hoping to take it a step further. We want to see how the community is feeling about this. We want to see if everyone is on board. Marine Discovery Center is one of several groups slated to talk Monday night. When New Smyrna Beach's Neighborhood Council will ask what people think about a proposal that would ban plastic straws and styrofoam used by contractors and vendors on city property. They never disappear. The working theory right now is that every single piece of plastic that has ever been produced is still on this planet in some form or another. A proposal Jesse Wales says has the potential to be an important first step for the community. 
Plastic is a huge issue for our area and the world in general. If it passes, it would not affect private businesses in the city. There's constantly plastic that is washing up on our shorelines, plastic that's being left behind from weekend vacationers. There's always plastic on the beaches. There's no shortage of it. A sentiment many are starting to see and embrace along the shoreline. Well, we, we are right on the beach, so we do feel like it's our responsibility to take part in our community and our environment when we can. In New Smyrna Beach, Clay Lepard getting results News 6. And we want to know what you think about this proposed ban. You can take part in our poll right now on ClickOrlando.com. There you can also find details on Monday's meeting where the single-use plastic ban will be explained at New Smyrna Beach City Hall. Hmm. Crazy to think every piece of plastic it, you have ever used is still on this planet. Yeah, somewhere. it's like, mind-blowing, right? Right, I just said, where's my Frisbee from when I was five? <laughs> yeah. Gone? It's where? somewhere. Okay, and I love a straw, but I love the ocean more. Yeah, yeah. it's worth it to yeah. do something. Chief Meteorologist Maybe. Tom Sorrells joins us now. It was cooking out there today. Burning up. We hit 90. Look at this. Daytime high today just hit 90 in the last hour. That is 7 degrees above normal. The overnight low this morning was only 65. We were 5 degrees above normal for our low. We got within three degrees of a record normally and go, hey, nowhere near the record. But today we were 90. The record is 93 from back in 1922. That's way back there. Now take a look at the Orlando Health camera. Cloud cover beginning to build up downtown. This has nothing to do with the big storms that are coming tomorrow. This is all sea breeze driven. Sea breeze is pushing in now, hasn't quite made it past OIA. Our winds are currently coming from the south southeast at nine. It is 90 degrees at the airport. Daytona Beach looks fab. Lots of people up and down the strip. I don't see as many cars out there today. I think a lot of folks went home, don't you think? Came down four or five days split, mm -hmm. leaving us before the weekend gets here. 81, currently in Daytona Beach. Tim's where you live, well, even in the villages, and as far north as Ocala, it's 87. 88 in Kissimmee, 84 in Melbourne, 82 in Cocoa Beach, and 82 in New Smyrna Beach. Okay, we're going to crank up the gain and check it out. We've got little scattered showers beginning to bubble right here along the East Coast Sea Breeze. Those are the showers that are starting now. The Sea Breeze will come into here. We'll get more of them once the East Coast and the West Coast Sea Breezes collide. But again, these showers have nothing to do with this, and this is the mess that's trying to hold together to get to you tomorrow. I firmly believe it's going to weaken. I don't think you're going to have those windshield bashing, house wrecking size hailstones by the time it gets to us tomorrow. But right now from Meridian, Mississippi to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, all the way down just outside of New Orleans, it is a very, very dangerous situation. Tornado warning after tornado warning for the folks in Mississippi, all the way down into Louisiana, the pouring rain is there. This is what it looks like on the water vapor loop right now. We're dry for the moment, but abundant moisture surges in here as the frontal zone begins to approach tomorrow. So it's raining hard from Memphis and storming all the way to the Gulf of Mississippi. I mean the Gulf of Mexico through the mouth of the Mississippi. So look at this. This is how we get to the day tomorrow. Scattered showers linger tonight along the colliding sea breezes and the outflow boundaries. But tomorrow at 10 a.m., it's about to start. Tomorrow by 4 p.m., it's game on. Big line of activity rolling in. If you have plans tomorrow between 4 and 8, you might want to change them until this gets past our viewing area. Here we are at 6 p.m. tomorrow with a heavy line rolling from Sanford to Orlando all the way to Kissimmee, and then it pushes on through by 8, 9, and 10. Saturday looks so much better. Winds calm and the rain on Saturday is a little oversold. Lows tonight, 72 in Orlando. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Hudson's Furniture. Temperatures make it to the mid 80s tomorrow, but rain chances are 90%. Here's the week ahead. We go to the daytime high tomorrow of 86, but it storms from about 3 o'clock on. And then Saturday, so much better and beautiful for your Easter Sunday. All right, we'll be here watching it tomorrow. I'll be here with you. All right, thanks, Tom. <laughs> Don't forget, you can get breaking weather alerts and live radar anytime on your phone or tablet with our free New 6 Pinpoint Weather app. Just search WKMG in your app store. Hey, do you have a long drive? I'm talking to you. Download Florida's fourth estate from wherever you get your podcast. This week, Ginger and I share stories about our worst professional advice <laughs> we have ever been given. It's pretty bad stuff. It's available on Stitcher, Google Play, and Apple. You can also find videos of all of our podcasts at clickorlando.com slash podcasts. A strange fight breaks out inside a restaurant. Police say a man pulled out an unexpected weapon. That weapon, his own pet iguana. We'll explain <laughs> what led up to this bizarre confrontation.
And ahead at six, a rough return following a storm at sea. What's next for the center core of the most powerful rocket on Earth after it tipped over? Today on the morning news, say it ain't so. We told you why some experts now say just one slice of bacon a day could cause serious health troubles. And coming up tomorrow, one of the tallest coasters in Florida officially opening. Why you'll have to make a bit of a drive, though, if you want to ride it. Plus, Troy will have an update on our risk for severe storms. We'll see you in the morning, starting. An incredible find in Russia has scientists trying to revive an extinct species. Researchers there discovered liquid blood inside the frozen carcass of an ancient foal which died 42,000 years ago. The animal was found in some permafrost in Siberia. Researchers are now working with a controversial South Korean biotech firm to try to cultivate the foal's cells for cloning. Although Russian officials admit their chances of success are quite slim. Like Jurassic Park with foals running around. Mm. Police say a man turned his pet iguana into a weapon. Now he's <laughs> facing several charges. It's on video, of course. Happened yesterday at a restaurant in Painesville, Ohio. The man sat down inside of Perkins. There he is, his iguana on his shoulder. What? It's like Rapunzel. Investigators <laughs> say he then threw a menu at a waitress, started screaming. The manager steps in. That's when he grabs his lizard and actually swings it at the manager. He missed and dropped the iguana in the process. The guy then snatched up his reptile and left, only to be arrested while he was wandering through some traffic. Veterinarians are now taking care of that iguana. That is a first for me right that there. That iguana did not deserve that. No, it didn't. No. Hey, a teen just set a new world record this morning. The boy from New Zealand spent 33 hours swinging on a swing set. The boy got started on his attempt yesterday, pumping his legs nearly constantly. He was allowed a five minute break every hour to eat or use the restroom. The boy explained what got him started on this attempt. We were joking like, but I ended up saying, yeah, I'm gonna beat the world swinging record, dude. And I don't know, it just escalated from there. Did you like, get any of that? I like the way he says it. <laughs> the teen will have to wait to get the record officially verified by Guinness World Records, but that did not stop him from wearing a t-shirt reading official world record holder. And I was reading more about this. He had to take motion sickness pills. I to was do that. thinking really? that. I mean, yes, and have he was you, eating ginger. I mean, that would. The older you get, you hop on a swing. I'm telling you, it'll upset your First tummy. First of all, He's not as old as you are, so <laughs> <laughs> I think True. he'll be fine. Well, right. he did yeah. take them. That I know a lot hours. of toddlers who'd love to be on a swing set for 33 That's hours. It. Yeah. Lisa Bell here with what we're working on at 6. Coming up tonight at 6, we are continuing to cover breaking news. A man is now charged in connection with a string of arsons. Coming up at 6, a live report on what we just learned about how investigators say they found the suspect. And a push for peace and quiet. The change some Central Florida people want to see in the air that could help them sleep better at night. Also, what one Central Florida City's police chief said at a charity event that caused him to be put on administrative leave. And how one program is saving Central Florida families money for free while giving students real-world experience. We'll be right back. Live, getting results. This is News 6 at 6. Breaking just into our newsroom, a man accused of sparking a string of arsons was just arrested. We're expecting deputies to walk him out of jail at any moment now. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Lisa Bell. In the past 30 minutes, we learned the suspect, James Bennett, was arrested in connection with a number of arsons in Lake County. News 6 reporter Nadine Giannis joins us now live from Lake County with the latest on this. And Nadine, he has been on their radar for weeks now. <laughs> He has now Northern Lake County and the Umatilla area can take a sigh of relief with the news of this arrest. We are waiting. We're heard less than five minutes now. 48 year old Anthony Bennett from Altoona will be brought here to the Lake County Jail. That deputy's car should be coming in here any minute now for his burp walk as he is going to be booked in. Let's take a look at who this guy is from an old mugshot that we had. 48 years old Anthony Bennett was just arrested and charged with four counts of arson and armed burglary. Lake County deputies connected him to four of the nine fires that terrorized Northern Lake County and Umatilla area for nine days. Now deputies confirm that this is Bennett in surveillance video connected to fires at the Sunoco gas station in Umatilla, Old Crow Barbecue Restaurant, two mobile homes, 
and even setting a deputy's patrol car on fire. And it looks like a couple of vehicles are being rolled in while we speak, guys. Let's take a second and see if this could be our suspect. 48-year-old Anthony Bennett, again, we're, we're told, was just arrested this afternoon in connection with the Umatilla area fires in Northern Lake County. Nine of them in the last nine days. And there was a task force of 25 people since then. February 15th through the 27th, these fires terrorized Umatilla. And these guys from Lake County Sheriff's Office, Umatilla Police Department, Lake County Fire Department, the County Fire Marshal's Office, and the State Fire Marshal's Office all coming to get this man right here, 48-year-old Anthony Bennett, being pulled into the Lake County Jail as we speak. Anthony, right now you're being charged with four of the nine fires. Do you want to say anything? Is there anything you wanted to say? Excuse us. Any sort of wish for what happened? County deputies? Was there a motive for the reason that you say you did this, sir? Is there anything you want to say? <laughs> Why did you do this? And guys, right here, that's 48-year-old Anthony Bennett being pulled into, brought into the Lake County Jail as we speak, connected to four of the nine arsons that happened in Umatilla area back in February. He's being charged with four counts of arson, including two counts of armed burglary. And we also know that he's about to be booked into jail on a $300,000 bond. Guys, we're going to keep following this as it develops right now and toss it back to you. Yeah, it's a story that has uh, startled people in Lake County for some time. So I know a lot of people were anxious to see what came of that. Nadine Giannis reporting live in Lake County. We'll have much more on that to come. Moving on now, the city of Mount Dora is apologizing tonight. That's more of the surveillance video there we from go. those arsons. Now we're moving yeah. on. City of Mount Dora apologizing a police chief under fire. The reason... His words, here's News 6, this is News 6 at 6. We're glad you could join us tonight. Yeah, the chief has been placed on paid leave, accused of making racially insensitive comments at an event on Friday. News 6's Vanessa Ariza is live at the police department tonight. And Vanessa, what is the city saying about this? Lisa, a spokesperson with the city of Mount Dora released a statement just a few hours ago saying that the chief of police's comments were insensitive and inappropriate. Mount Dora's police chief, John O'Grady, began working for the department back in 2013. He served as their public safety director and was pegged to take on the position as chief once the former chief retired. His personnel file shows he's held in high regard, with others complimenting his accomplishments. But the law enforcement veteran is under fire after comments he made at a golf tournament on Friday. During the ceremony, Chief O'Grady is said to have made a racially insensitive remark about Hispanics. Laura Hargrove is an attorney for a couple who owns a Cuban restaurant in downtown Mount Dora. On her social media page, she explains an award was to be presented to them, but a medical emergency kept them from attending. The chief, she says, decided to allow a Hispanic officer to accept on their behalf. He reportedly said they were the same. A spokesperson for the city said, quote, the remarks are in no way reflective of the city's values, principles, and ideals, and can only be characterized as insensitive and inappropriate. An interview with the chief was declined. The city spokesperson said an apology will be sent to all members and sponsors who attended the Mount Dora Heroes Foundation golf tournament. And the attorney for that couple tells me that they have yet to receive that apology letter from the city. It's a, her understanding that they will receive that tomorrow, she says. Until then, her clients will continue to support their community as well as their city. She says she looks forward to getting that letter tomorrow and putting all of this behind them. Live in Mount Dora tonight, Vanessa Ariza getting results. News 6. Vanessa, thank you. 2,800 subpoenas, 500 search warrants and about 500 witness interviews have culminated into one 400-page report. Attorney General William Barr released the redacted report this morning, the document outlining special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Mueller's investigation focused on two things, if there was obstruction of justice and if there was any collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Mueller's team writing, there wasn't enough evidence to establish obstruction of justice, 
and the Trump campaign did not take any criminal steps with Russia. We now know that the Russian operatives who perpetrated these schemes did not have the cooperation of President Trump or the Trump campaign. I'm having a good day, too. It was called <laughs> No Collusion, No Obstruction. And here's some interesting information. We do know Florida was somehow involved in this investigation. The Mueller report mentions an email meant to steal data was sent to 120 accounts used by Florida local election officials. The FBI is saying they believe Russians hacked at least one Florida county. Now congressional Democrats are requesting Robert Mueller's testimony before Congress, quote, as soon as possible. Maybe then we'll learn more. You can read the redacted report for yourself on our website. Just go to clickorlando.com. You'll find it on the homepage. And tonight you can learn more about Mueller's report and lawmaker reaction. Watch it on the CBS Evening News. That's coming up at 630. Tomorrow is a weather alert day. A strong storm system threatening violent weather is headed our way. It has already brought hail, high wind, and some tornadoes to central Gulf Coast states. Video shows the aftermath of strong storms in Fort Bend, Texas. A collapsed metal barn and downed trees were spotted in the area southwest of Houston. And video from storm damage in Shreveport, Louisiana. You can see a tree toppled over there right in front of a home. Crews have been working all day to restore power. That same system that caused all of that damage is headed our way. Chief Meteorologist Tom Searles is pinpointing and tracking the latest for us. And Tom, it is very clear on radar what's headed our way. Yep, come take a look right now. You see it extending all the way from Memphis, Tennessee to Jackson, Mississippi, all the way down to New Orleans. Much of the big energy will escape to the north, so I'm not expecting big hailstones to damage your house, crush your car windshields like it's been doing back out here. But you see there are two lines, one line here and a second one in behind it. That's going to play a big factor in what happens to us eventually. But right now, it's just so ugly up in those parts of the woods from Hattiesburg all the way down to Biloxi is where it's really at its toughest. Tornado warning after tornado warning has been issued tonight with that squall line. While here at home, our light scattered showers are breaking out on the sea breeze right now. These are not tied to the nastiness that's coming our way tomorrow. This cloud cover is sea breeze driven. Temperature reading right now in Orlando is down from 90 to 88. I'll be right back to pinpoint the arrival of the nasty weather for your Friday and when it clears out of here so you can enjoy your weekend. See you in a few. Tom, thank you. You yeah. can get all the latest weather alerts directly on your phone by downloading our free Pinpoint Weather app. We'll let you know when storms move through your area. Just search WKMG in your app store. A possible change of course in the air that could provide some noise relief on the ground. Yeah, Florida Aviation Administration is considering changing the flight paths of airplanes going and coming from Orlando International Airport. That could help some neighbors who complain it's just too loud where they live. New 6's Jerry Askin joins us live from the Winter Park Community Center, where neighbors are meeting to give their input on these possible changes. Jerry. Matt, yes, and that meeting began here in about, about five minutes ago at the Winter Park Community Center. The FAA hoping to get more community feedback when it comes to air traffic control possible changes. Many residents, though, as you mentioned, saying noise is their biggest concern. Here, and looky, looky how, how down that airplane is. Tonight, many residents are sounding off over loud noise soaring high above their homes from this airplanes landing at the Orlando International Airport. Because it's too loud. Too loud. And that bothers you. And that's a, a daytime. Imagine nighttime. Many residents are hoping a meeting tonight hosted by the Federal Aviation Authority will address this. Some of them come a lot lower and of course a lot louder. I guess it depends on the type of aircraft also. The FAA saying the plan is to discuss proposed traffic control procedures and get community feedback on ways to enhance safety and efficiency in the air. We got these maps today. It shows you some proposed changes, and the FAA said the changes could mean flights flying more efficiently. So it's important to us to get the public input now, and then we'll begin an environmental process with a noise analysis over the next year or so. At a meeting at OIA yesterday, the Noise Abatement Board showed maps like the one here of loud noise over homes in Orlando an issue many residents hope the FAA will consider and address. It, it does get annoying. I don't see why they can't go further east where there's less, less. 
and that meeting runs here until 9 p.m. at the Winter Park Community Center. We're live in Winter Park, Jerry Askin, and getting results, News 6. All right, Jerry, thank you. Well, a Central Florida program saving taxpayers $2 million since its inception. Next, how this week's Getting Results Award winner helps put money in the pockets of local families. You're watching News 6 at 6, getting results for Coco, Winter Garden, and all of Central Florida. We'll be right back. Florida Hospital is now Advent Health. The same doctors you know, the same care you trust. Caring for your body, mind, and spirit. We are staying on top of breaking news in Lake County. At the top of the newscast, we showed you this live as suspect James Bennett was arrested in connection with a number of arsons in Lake County. Deputies say a witness came forward and helped them make the arrest. You can read more about this arrest right now at clickorlando.com. Well, the tax deadline has come and gone, and for many, all of the number crunching was brutal. But most people don't know a national program offers free tax prep for families who make less than $55,000 a year. So we went to Volusia County, where this week's Getting Results Award winner has helped thousands of people cash in on refunds at no charge. Lots of letters, lots of numbers, lots of forms. Numbers. It depends on a whole bunch of stuff. Anxiety. Like oh, let's see what we can do here. And a looming deadline. So Uncle Sam may charge you a penalty. For what? That can We're only mean one you. thing. Oh, uh, like quarterly tax? Your exactly. year in review. There's your gas expense for the whole year. Broken into numbers. I do. And when it comes to numbers. I do like numbers. Bonnie Holloway. Numbers are safe. Has you covered. Everything gets started okay? The Stetson University visiting lecturer has been coordinating the volunteer tax assistance program here on campus. All right, where are we? For five years. Income tax is like a game where if you know the rules better than the next guy, then you can serve your clients better than the next guy. And Holloway, along with this group of student volunteers, okay. are certainly serving their clients. The students do all the work and I just kind of hang around the edges and, and make sure that everything goes okay. She tends to stay in the background and out of the limelight, which is unfortunate because she does so very much. Does so much to give the accounting students real world experience and at the same time yes. saving hundreds on the cost of tax preparation for people like Tammy Jones. I just started my own business um, who had no idea how to even file my taxes you know, um, that I could find some place like this that could help me for free. Yeah, Bonnie Holloway is definitely getting results. She was nominated for the Getting Results Award by Assistant Site Coordinator Jeffrey Ghost. She has a definite passion for this. She is uh, all about helping out the community. And while she may like numbers, Holloway will tell you the only number that matters is the number of satisfied clients. Stetson values service. That's one of the things that Stetson is known for. And so this is just a form of doing that. It's fun. I wouldn't do it if it weren't fun. Here you pressure. go, my dear. Thank you Thank so much. You so much Bob. Tell all your friends and neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she great? Hey, if you know someone like Bonnie getting results, we want to know about them. You can nominate someone you know for the Getting Results Award by going to our website, clickorlando.com. Simply go to the top banner under Getting Results, fill out the form, and you might see them featured right here in the coming weeks. And you know what I love about that one? She's using what she has. You know, yes. she's good with numbers, so she helps people with their taxes. I love all the comments that you get from the people that she's helping out. For what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very interesting. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell hey. is joining us now. So much going on in the weather department. It's kind of crazy. We have yeah. a big day tomorrow. It's Good Friday. It's yeah. the start of Passover. But the storms kind of play havoc with that. Mm -hmm. The rest of the weekend, I'll show you in a moment. Take a look at what's going on for tonight. Big weather story, breezy. Now we will have some scattered showers out there tonight. They're beginning to occur right now on the East Coast Seabreeze. They're not huge and they have nothing to do with the nastiness that's coming in tomorrow. I'll show you radar in a moment. There are some showers to be had this evening. Tomorrow, heavy to severe storms are still possible, most especially to the north. Marion County, I worry more about you this time than everywhere else. You guys are more of an enhanced area instead of just slight, you are enhanced. So I think Marion County could have a big cross to bear tomorrow. Weekend, storms gone. Sunshine returns for Saturday and for Sunday, but you gotta get through tomorrow. Now look at this stuff. It is nasty over here in Mississippi and Alabama tonight. All of this is going to the Northeast. Much of the energy will be spent 
by the time the front gets to us. I'm not saying it's not going to storm. I just don't believe we're going to have a huge tornado outbreak like they've had so far through parts of Mississippi here this afternoon. One, two tornado warnings going on right now. Severe thunderstorm warning going all the way down into Louisiana. It is ugly, ugly, ugly here at home. We got little pockets of rain right there. East Coast Sea Breeze is into here now. These have formed on the East Coast Sea Breeze and are blowing back up to the northeast. Once the sea breezes collide within the next couple of hours, we'll have a few more of those little showers, but nothing super huge tonight. We'll keep you posted. In the meantime, down to 81 degrees in Daytona Beach. Relative humidity beach side is kind of high, 77%. Beachside and Palm Coast, 81, Flagler County, Bavard County, Titusville, 82, Melbourne, 82. Across the interior, a little bit warmer than that. We hit 90 in Orlando. We're at 88 now. Same in Kissimmee and Ocala. Sanford is at 85. We're 8 degrees hotter right now than we were yesterday at the same time, and it's breezy with the wind from the southeast at 15 in Orlando. Here's the water vapor loop. You see the moisture coming our way. It doesn't really do much tonight. We get the sea breezes colliding between now and about 10 or 11. Boom, a few showers. They linger, but tomorrow is the day. Here it comes. Here's five o'clock tomorrow afternoon with big storms rocking in. By six, they hit downtown Orlando and push out to the east by seven, eight, and nine. Still dealing with little pockets of rain and 30 mile per hour wind gusts are likely through the afternoon. Saturday and Sunday look much better. Rain totals before it's over more than half of an inch in Orlando. Your low tonight is 72. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Del Air Heating and Air Conditioning. Okay, you know it's going to storm by midday. The high tomorrow is 86. Check out the week ahead. 86 for the daytime high tomorrow with storms. Then come Saturday, we clear up. 75 Easter Sunday looks beautiful at 78. I'll have new models at 11. Love that weekend. Thank you, Tom. Tonight at 7, are you sick of the construction on I-4? Yeah. Yes. Tired of the backups and, in some cases, the damage to your car? The current project is expected to be completed in about two more years. But investigator Lewis Bolden tells us there is more to come after that. Where and when beyond the ultimate will get in gear. That's coming up at 7. Also new at 7, face to face with the deadliest snake in Florida. A local woman grabbed a machete. But not for the reason you might think, the brave way she ended her coral snake encounter. That's coming up at 7. All right, Sports Director Jamie Say is here. Time for a little home cooking for the Magic. Yeah, that's right. Last time there was playoff basketball in Orlando was a while ago, okay? It was May 5th, 2012. Well, postseason wow. hoops, thankfully, back at the Amway Center now. And there are still a few tickets available for Game 3 if you want some. So how is the Magic's mindset today? Two days removed from the Game 2 blowout and one day before that very important Game 3. We were at Magic, to, uh, Magic practice today, and Coach Clifford, delivered some positive reinforcement after this one. You're going to hear from the guys next. That's open mic every weekday morning on 96.9 The Game. Sounds good. Jamie Say, yep. thank you. We'll be right back. Ram dealer. A reminder, tomorrow is a weather alert day. Strong storms headed our way. CBS Evening News starts right now. We'll see you back.